Michigan 28, Arkansas State 18. I think we can draw a couple of conclusions about this Michigan team through the first few weeks of the season. Number one, they're still looking for answers at quarterback. Davis Warren, 11 of 14, 122 yards and three interceptions. I don't know what else they need to see to make a change at quarterback, but they're they're sticking with Davis Warren. There's no passing game here. If you can stop Michigan from running the football, you can just stop Michigan. We saw that with Texas last week, and this just continues to be true. Davis Warren doesn't look close. The passing game does not look even close. Now, Michigan, I, I don't think this is sky is falling game for the Wolverines. It certainly wasn't the most impressive performance, but this game was not quite as close as the score indicated by the end of it. You know, Arkansas State kind of got on a run. Michigan might have been in a little prevent defense because they were up 21 to 3. They were up 21 to 3. They were favored by, I think the number was 23 and a half points going into this game. And I thought they would cover that particular number. And it looked like they would. And then Arkansas State came back. So it's not as if Michigan looked completely unlike what we saw last year. They got the ground game going over 300 yards on the ground. Do you remember what I what I just said? If you stop Michigan's run game, you stop Michigan. Well, Arkansas State didn't stop Michigan's run game. So this was probably a little closer than Michigan fans wanted it to be by the end of it. But they've got USC next week. If they can't figure out how to pass the ball just a little bit, I, I'm not saying you can't go for 200 rushing yards against USC's defense, which is much improved from a year ago, but not a dominant unit, I don't think. If you go for 200 yards on the ground, how, how many points do you score if you take 100 yards of offense away from Michigan today? That USC game, boy, Wolverine's still a pretty sizable favorite. I'll be surprised if that number stays at the 8.5, 9.5 that it has been for uh, the last couple of weeks when the Trojans roll through. Because USC, through the first couple of games, they've looked really good. They've looked very good. Michigan, eh, not so much. You know, there were better things. The ability to run the football, that's encouraging. That's That's got to be encouraging if you're a Michigan fan because that's all you've got offensively. Mullings went for 153 yards and two touchdowns on 15 carries. I tell you what, that's some efficiency. Donovan Edwards, 17 carries, 82 yards and a score. I, I think that Michigan is kind of what I expected them to be so far. We'll see. We'll see what they're able to do next week against USC. I don't have a supreme level of confidence in Michigan's ability to win a track meet. They have to win that football game their way. And that's kind of how it was a season ago. The problem for everybody else is it was hard to get them out of their way. They were only trailing for, I think it was like 90 seconds or some incredibly small number after or during last season in the run of the national championship. So they were always playing with the lead. What if USC comes in and puts up the first 10 points? What if USC takes the ball, which is what I would do if I were Lincoln Riley and company, and they go down and they score a touchdown on the first drive? Are, are, are you able to play from behind? Because so far, I don't have any faith in Davis Warren's ability to move the offense down the field. It has to be the ground game, and there's, th th there's just nothing there. I mean, this is Arkansas State. They're coming out of a, a, a G5 league and not one of the stronger ones, per se. Like, that game offensively, I thought Michigan would be able to do a little more, especially running for almost seven yards of carry. But uh, Davis Warren, they, they might need to find something with Alex Orgy, figure out how he can work into the offense because Davis Warren is just not going to be that guy for the Wolverines. Uh, another score that caught my eye. Missouri 27, Boston College 21. This is a solid game for the Tigers. This is arguably a better game for the Eagles, who had a lead in this football game. That's right. That's right. It was 14 to three. Missouri put up 14 points in the second half of the fourth quarter and came back to win the football game. I think Missouri looks about how I expect them to through the first couple of games. I didn't have a score prediction for this one, admittedly, but Brady Cook, 21 to 30, 264 and a touchdown. Luther Burden, six catches, 117 yards and a touchdown. Do either of those stat lines surprise you? No. You know what does surprise some people? Boston College, who's already beaten Florida State. They're 2-1. and one. Look, I know the Eagles lost this football game, and that's disappointing because they could have kept their top 25 role just continuing here. If you're the administration at Boston College, you have to be ecstatic, ecstatic that you went and made the Bill O'Brien hire. 
Because remember, that was done late in the process. That was not an easy find. Jeff Halfley leaves you kind of hanging out to dry, and then all of a sudden, Bill O'Brien is not going to be the offensive coordinator at Ohio State anymore? He, he's he's going to be your head coach? Well, boy, through the first couple of games, I don't know how much more impressive of a start you could have if – if you're Boston College. I think they have been really, really solid through the first couple of games. It's a nice win for Missouri. I'm not going to downgrade this win for Missouri at home and say, oh, well, you know, you played a decent team and you barely beat them and whatnot. Look out for Vanderbilt next week. I mean, you should look out for Vanderbilt. They might be 3-0 and by the end of the day, but this is more about what Boston College is rather than what Missouri isn't. I don't think Missouri is going to crater down and with the most favorable schedule in the entire SEC suddenly become a six to seven win team. I think they're still going to be in the eight to 10 range. I just think that for Missouri, they played a team probably a little bit better than their fans anticipated coming into this matchup. So uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with Boston College, man. I, I think they have been really, really good. Thomas Castellanos, a couple of interceptions, but you know, he does enough. He does enough. And the good news for Missouri, you held Boston College to 46 yards rushing as a team. That's a good sign. Because what was one of the questions about Missouri coming into the year? How's your defense going to be now that Blake Baker is down at LSU, where he's admittedly giving up a lot of points? But still, when you have that sort of change, you wonder. Missouri through three games, I mean, they ended their uh, their scoreless their scoreless uh, quarters allowed drought, which was, I think, 11 quarters dating back to last year coming into today. But Murray State blanked, Buffalo blanked, Boston College 21, and they didn't run the football, which is what they've done in the first couple of games. I, I think Boston College is not going to be necessarily towards the top of the ACC, but are going to be a lot closer to it than most of us would have expected coming into the year. And I think for Missouri, this is still a good place to be. You're, you're still doing all right. You beat, Don't take Vandy lightly. Heed the warnings of Virginia Tech. Don't take them lightly. But what a morning. What a morning of football that was. Kept waiting to record because LSU South Carolina wouldn't end. It just kept going and going. And I was enjoying every second of it. And I hope you enjoyed every second of the show as well. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.